Today, we're taking a look at a new piece for bass, duo, trio, and quartet. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and one of my favorite contemporary composers for the double bass is Michael Kurth. The piece we're looking at today is called Should I, and it was commissioned by Hal Robinson and the Wah Bass Institute for their 2021 event. Hal is a big fan of Michael's compositions, including The Monster Never Tires, which I did a video on, I'll link up to that here. And this piece has an improvisatory section and sort of took on a life of its own at the Wah Bass Institute. I was there, let's check it out. Couple of us are talking about opening up during the Kurth tonight uh, and doing a little jam. How does, does anybody object to that? <laughs> if we could find a way to logistically make it work, so it's, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, well, that's great. Yeah, so the quartet would just be here, right. we'd sit up over here, and then everybody would just kind of come around us. We could put our bases in the lobby and then come down the, the, the center rows. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. in all its versions, plus a lot of other music by Michael, is available in our sheet music store. We'll link to that in the description below. And let's dig in and listen to a complete performance and follow along with the score of the quartet version of Should I from the Wabes Institute. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, let's check out the duo version of Shouldn't I? And I love these titles. Michael's great with the titles, whether it's The Monster Never Tires or all of his other pieces. Really creative musician. And I'm using this app called Music, which I've been meaning to do a review on. I interviewed the marketing director, Paul, uh, a few months ago. But this has this really cool feature called live scores. And so what it's done is I just put the PDF, you can do this with any uh, music, uh, it's it's incredible. I put the PDF in here and I just had to generate a live score and I can, can actually play along with that. Which is like, so useful just for kind of getting a, a lay of the land with the piece and I mean, I just love it. So this piece, you know, it's, it's great to hear Renan and all these incredible musicians play it. I think this works well for many levels. Michael has such a great way of writing um, incredibly catchy music that is also, it has some challenges, but also is, sits great on the bass. And I think this sits really wonderfully on the bass and just, just really fun. So I start with a thumb position. I've been experimenting with just, you know, G string and D string, and then um, I've been going fifth right there, but you could take it somewhere else. You go, uh, oh, maybe I should do that actually. <laughs> and then I like that minor seventh, and then we got this cool. So it's really cool the way that he divides these up. There's this groovy part in the second part around the accelerando, put the bow down, and it's like, Just really, really fun writing. And then there's this cool groove at A. So I've been playing around, it's like thump, thump, tap, slap. So it's like right hand thump, tap, tap, slap. So. And I've been playing around with like doing the left hand slap wherever I'm at or someone's taking the hand off of the bass so it all works well. And then in the first part of A, we've got this groove that you heard Renan and company play, but it sits great in this, in this bass dual version. Of... And again, as we get into the piece at B, the second part has this really groovy line. Now we're adding a couple ghost notes. such fun to, to play and I need to get my coordination down to get those ghost notes a little bit better, but just really, really sits well on the bass. Then we've got this solo section here and they really explored that with the wah bass version. That was super cool and again, uh, leaving it open for the top part, but then the second part having this really, I love this group. through the keys. Then in H we get this recap back into the main theme. We get that same groove part in the second part. And as you get that into the body, it really flows well. Same part for the top part. And then it ends in this really cool pianissimo. So you got some, some stuff to optionally up the octave at the end, but we've got this. Something like that, I will work on that <laughs> before I play in public. But I think that this works great for people at all sorts of different levels. We also have the trio version, so we're just fleshing it out a little bit more, giving another voice, and this works great. Again, we got these similar lines. Second line. So that was just the first line before, so that's broken up, and then this part in double bass three. And it all is quite intuitive where it sits on the bass. We get some harmony now that we have the uh, two voices for bass one and two at letter A. So we got that par for And then we've got for bass two. Very 
fun. And having that third voice, of course, it just opens up some possibilities for exploring the sound, having a few different timbres and harmonies, and we see that in the open solo section. So we have that groove section uh, that we had just like for the duo version. But now we get the second part, which is like. So very cool. That's a look inside Shouldn't I by Michael Kurth. We've got that linked in the description below if you want to pick it up in our sheet music store, the duo, trio, or quartet version. Michael has so many other great titles. If you want to learn more about what's going on in double bass music, check out this video we've got linked up. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.